Hello, I thought I would show you a little different kind of video today. I thought I'd show you uh, some information, talk to you about some information about this guitar. If you're a Cure fan, you probably recognize this. Uh, this is uh, an old Gibson, I think 175 or 295, I don't know which. Uh, they also made an acoustic with no pickups in it. It could be one of those, I don't remember the model number. But uh, basically what this is, is a, a heavily modified 175 or 275. I believe this front pickup most likely is original. It's a metal uh, covered pickup. Back to our plastic. I think these are uh, were added after the fact. On the back side of this, 295 is written in pencil, which makes me wonder, is this a 295? Which, if you don't know, a 295 and a 175 are the same thing. The only difference is 295 is gold, and it has a floral design on the pick guard. The 175 came in sunbursts and some other colors. Uh, but who knows, this could be a 175 with a 295 pickup, and I don't know. Uh, this guitar's obviously been refinished. There's tape lines around the binding, um, all around it. The headstock clearly is not a Gibson headstock. Um, Paul Bigsby design. Uh, on the back, there is a serial number starting with a B. Uh, raised Gibson logo. This logo come much, came much later than when this guitar was manufactured. Uh, based upon the size of the F holes, um, we think this is probably either an early issue, a 49, 50, 51, 52, somewhere around that area, or era. Three and a, three and a quarter inch deep body, so this is um, deeper than most Gibsons, like a 335 or even uh, Gretsch's, which were two and three quarter deep. Um, also, I don't know if you can see this video, there's a plate here a square that maybe something was there before I don't know but I can see a crack in the finish around that I don't know if it was a patch or what but uh, something uh, had been altered there this guitar also has no decal inside so I can't there's no serial number can't tell you the uh, the actual date from that from that uh, logo um, so a little bit about this guitar I was talking to Porl way back in the late 90s. This is after he quit the Cure for technically the second time. He had played with Plant and Page on a couple tours. Um, he used this during the Plant and Page years, and obviously he used this during the Cure. You can see this in the Never Enough vi video. It's prominent throughout. It does a, has a short cameo in the Love Song video. Also, the live uh, film show that the Cure did is used throughout that. This was used on many tours, um, many records. Uh, Disintegration, it's littered across Dennis Disintegration and Wish, uh, and Lost Wishes. Uh, Pearl said he would use this thing at a volume just on the verge of feedback, uh, either be through a AC30 or a couple boogie amps or a couple deluxe, uh, Fender Deluxe reverbs. Um, uh, let's see, this guitar came in a flight case uh, when we when he offered this to me, I asked him. I said, "Do you have any guitars, uh, stage props, artwork?" Because he did all the artwork for the with Parched Start for the singles and the albums. I asked him if he had any of that left over, and he said he's really not a keeper. He said he was not really a keeper of things, but he had two guitars. One was a custom guitar with Gretsch uh, pickups in it, and then he mentioned an odd big black Gibson hollow body with a Fender neck, and I instantly knew what guitar that was. Uh, because this is the guitar I associated the most with Porl at that time. Um, the first time I saw this guitar was the first time The Cure played live in America, or uh, did a live broadcast, and that was in 1989 at the MTV uh, VMA Music Awards. They played Just Like Heaven. This is a guitar that Porl used on stage that night. Uh, so as soon as he mentioned this guitar, I said I would take it. Without discussing any terms, I told him I would take it. Uh, this, was in a, this was in the middle of the winter, he said he would have a crate, a wooden crate made for the road case, and then he would ship it over. Once that was built, uh, I asked him not to uh, ship it on certain days because I didn't want the guitar to sit in a warehouse and, and freeze and, and develop even more checking than this guitar already has. Maybe you could see in this video, there's checking throughout and some on the back as well. Uh, so he overnighted this, this big box from England to me and it arrived at UPS in this big wooden box. I got it home and there were all these flathead brass screws all around the perimeter of the box and I was 
were very anxious to open this up because I couldn't believe I had this guitar. As I started unscrewing the, the top, I got almost all of it done except for the corner. I grabbed the plywood lid and I started lifting it up and the wood started to splinter. And I just decided I'm going to wait a few minutes, unscrew it, open it properly. I'm glad I did because on the inside of the lid, Porl had painted uh, a painting on the, on, on the underside, which I'll show you here in just a second, which that meant more to me probably than, than the guitar. Also included was a couple signed photos of Porl playing this guitar live during the disintegration time frame, a worn pick, and a white Gibson guitar strap, a nylon strap that he used when he played this guitar, but he asked me to get that signed by Les Paul for his son Todd, which I had done and, and shipped back. Um, but that's what came in the case, uh, which I thought was nice of him to include all those things. But anyway, this guitar was strung originally, I believe he said with 16s, which are crazy heavy for uh, a, a guitar. This right now is strung with 10s. Um, I don't know how he would be able to bend like he did with 16s, but he did. Um, the guitar sounds great, plays great especially for a guitar as old as it is. If you notice all the binding around this guitar has yellowed with age, the lacquer has yellowed. Um, the input or the output on this guitar was actually an input for a Marshall amp, so probably some type of roadside repair um, during a tour. Uh, I'll show you some photos in a moment of the case and an interesting mantra that was uh, written on hotel stationery and, and, and stuck to the case that he would read before playing, which I think is another really cool thing that was included. Uh, but that's this guitar. Uh, I'm lucky to have it. Uh, and um, just a couple little things you probably recognize. typical guitar video because of where this came from, who had it, and uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it.